morning everyone may almighty god bless you and keep you in jesus name amen our topic today is how to let god fight your battles and we are going to take our story from the story of Jehoshaphat. let us pray everlasting father king of glory lord of lords we give you thanks and adoration for everything you have done in our lives oh god help your children all over the world even those that are going to listen to this video may you bless them abundantly in jesus name amen hallelujah amen when you stop and think about it we are in the middle of several battles battles with the weather our health or that of our families our financial situations relationships with our families and neighbors and within ourselves the question that is plugging me is how to let god fight your battles i've always been independent it can be a blessing and a curse it has benefited me often when i needed to do things on my own but sadly it often stands between god and his will for my life so how do you let god fight your battles everyone is different and we all are facing battles on various levels what i'm starting to understand as i go through the word of god in the bible and i can see what god has done in so many lives and god is able to do it today for you amen god is able to let us be as his children the lord says the battle is mine says the lord the battle is mine says the lord is seen many times in scriptures it was in my early morning devotions when the house was still and i was thinking about so many things that happened around in the world then i went to read the book of chronicles about Jehoshaphat, and i look unto god what god is able to do let us just go into look at the life of Jehoshaphat in the book of second chronicles 17 20 but we are going to focus on the story found in chapter in chapter 20. Jehoshaphat is king of judah he is one of the kings that loved and obeyed the one true god several strong armies joined forces against judah hearing this Jehoshaphat goes straight to god and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the lord and proclaim a fast throughout all judah so judah gathered together to ask help from the lord and from all the cities of judah they came to seek the lord second chronicles chapter 20 verse 3 to 4 Jehoshaphat gathers the people together and prays before the temple. I love how he proclaims his faith from the very beginning. O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? That is verse 6. He explains the situation to God and ends it his prayer with oh our god will you not judge them for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us nor do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you that is verse 12 the prayer he he prayed then god answers the prayer of his people do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's you will not but God you will not need to fight in this battle position yourself stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you O Judah and Jerusalem do not fear or be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you this is verse 15 and 17 did you catch that god told them to stand still allow him to walk how often do we try to solve our situations ourselves and not allow god to work perhaps if we want to know how 
to let God fight our battles, then we must first learn to stand still. Jehoshaphat and all the people bowed themselves to the ground and worshipped. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tukar. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, and who should praise the beauty of his holiness, as they went out before the army, and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever, from verses 20 to 21. And you know, and you know what happens. The different armies began to fight one another rather than making an unfilled force against Judah. They fought and killed one another. The only action on the side of Judah was praising God. Listen. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped from verse 24. Then they go down and take all the valuables from the dead bodies. It took them three days to collect it all. Not only did God fight their battle for them, but he honored their faith for that and blessed them with wealth. The battle is mine, says the Lord. Was not a simple statement made by God to comfort his people? It truly was his battle and he was able to walk because the people believed and obeyed God. Do you believe that God will solve all your problems? Do you believe that that thing you're crying and weeping, that God will make a way for you? Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, Almighty God is ready to fight our battles. He's ready to see you through. I know when people were fighting me in this my life, I know when people were fighting my family, because we are Christian family. So my father will call us for prayers. We fast, we fast, all these things. And God one day hear our cry. Those people that call themselves our family enemies, I don't know what happened to them, but on our own side, God was glorified. So shall you be glorified today. Weep not, my brothers and sisters, because Almighty God will fight your battle. Do not fight your battle yourself, because this battle we are fighting is not carnal. It's a spiritual battle. Wait on the Lord. The Lord will make a way for you, and you will be blessed in the land of the living. Amen. Thank you very much. May the good Lord guide and protect you in Jesus' name. Amen.